I'm often asked on the channel about the cue itself, its relation to the tip, etc. Well, first and foremost, let me say that top professionals, they all have trouble with their tips. It's a very important aspect of the cue. It's the only thing that has contact with the cue ball, so its importance cannot be overestimated. But if we start from square one, let's look at the cue uh, initially. And my cue here, my original cue, made by John Paris of London, we have the flat and the nameplate. If we follow that down and in line with that flat nameplate, we'll come across the chevrons of the ash cue. Now, most reputable cue manufacturers make their cue in that manner. People who use an ash cue tend to play with the chevrons on top. The cue that was made for me by Qcraft of Nottingham, another reputable cue manufacturer, you'll notice that we've got the flat, their nameplate, and everything's line, in line with the chevrons. These chevrons are more pronounced on their, their cue, the one they made for me, than on my original cue. It's important to use the cue the same way round all the time. The chevrons will help you with your sighting process and the tip will wear down accordingly as to how you hit the ball, how you use the cue, even how you chalk the cue. Now I think that's important because if you continually use the cue that way round and then all of a sudden you turn it the other way round and use the cue that way there's a very real danger that you will push the cue ball offline very marginally I'll be aware of that it is very slight but sometimes it can be enough either to make you miss the pot or to inhibit your positional shot so please Try to use the cue the same way round all the time, whichever way you choose. Just emphasising the point, it's rather like uh, someone who uses a fountain pen. That nib on the fountain pen will wear down as to how they write. If you or I come along and use their fountain pen, we will be writing slightly differently, and as a result of that, the nib will wear down slightly differently and it may just affect the original owner's uh, ability to write as he would like. He would be very reluctant to allow you to use his fountain pen. Equally, a top player would be very reluctant to allow you to use his cue for any length of time, simply because the tip will wear down slightly differently to how he uses it. On the subject of tip, I'm asked, should it be a, a, a smooth surface or a rough surface? Well, the answer to that is it should be a smooth surface. But that doesn't mean that it can't be too smooth. Of course it can. The chalk on the tip can get compressed a little bit and impregnated on there uh, to the point where it, get, it just needs breaking down a little bit. And there are implements on the market to assist you with that. This one is a, uh, I don't know what you call it, it's rather shaped like a paddle, smooth on one side, and it's got a knurled surface on this side. Oh, please, I want to tell you, do not use it like a file. It is not meant like that. All you do with this implement is just very gently tap the cue to break that compacted chalk down and just roughen the surface very slightly. Then you can re-chalk. Ready for your next shot. Another useful implement is this one. Slightly different. And it's a series of needles from there. And all you do with that implement is just gently Tap the surface, giving a little bit of pinpricks, breaking that compacted chalk down and ruffling the surface very, very slightly. 
And then you can chalk your cue again. Ready for the next shot. A lot of people have problems centralising a tip when they're putting a new tip on. Well, over the years I've, I've learnt to do that without any gadgets. But, in my early days, trying to find a good way of putting a tip on and centralising it, and talking with colleagues, etc., I've come across one or two ideas. Here, I've got some masking tape and three cocktail sticks. You'll notice that the cocktail sticks are slightly proud of the masking tape. So I put the masking tape around the ferrule. And the cocktail sticks, incidentally, are about half inch apart. And as I wrap the masking tape around, I've created a little, little triangle for the tip to slot in, and that, that will centralise the tip on the cue. Quite an easy thing to do. Another method is this one, where it's a little bit of plasking tubing. Please don't ask me what it's called, I don't know. But it's available from any hardware store. And all this is a little bit of plastic tubing, which I've split down the middle. You place a tip in there, slot it onto the queue with the tip in place. So from there, the tip is held in. With my finger, I slide the tubing down. Right, the tip is left there. I allow it to set a little bit and peel the plastic tubing on. One word of caution if you use this method, please put a little bit of masking tape on the cue, like I did in my original video from there. Just dress it down the cue a little bit. Now, when you drag this down, this tubing down, there is a possible possibility that you will drag a little bit of the glue down with it. And if you don't have the masking tape, you will drag it onto the cue itself, which we don't want. So here, I've put the masking tape on, the tip is in position, I just peel this off there, and any glue that was dragged down is on the masking tape, not on the cue. So when I remove the masking tape, I also remove any surplus glue. In my video on the how to put a tip on, I made reference to the fact that some will last 10 minutes, others will last weeks and even months. But ultimately the tip will need changing, either through the fact that it's worn out, chipped, damaged, etc. Don't forget that we are continually striking quite an heavy object, the cue ball. As a result of that, the tip will get compacted and hard. And also a good player will start to recognise it, either with the sound that it's making, whether it's miscuing, or the, the cue ball is not reacting as it, as it should. So we will start to think about replacing that tip. So please make reference to my video on how to put a tip on. And don't forget the value of these things. These little implements which help to make a tip last a little bit longer. Either this one or this one. Look after your tip and it'll look after you.